Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about improper integrals of unbounded functions. So one thing I'd like to um, uh, uh, focus on here are the idea that when we have an integral from a to b of f of x dx, okay, the really big note here, of course, is that f must be continuous on a to b. And what's important is, of course, we're using those square brackets, means that a and b too. There has to be the both points there, right? So if it's continuous on the whole interval, of course, we know that, you know, f must be defined must be defined on a b and of course uh, um, all all points x in a b must have the limit x going to a or of, of x going to we'll call it x star there is going to be equal to f at x star okay so this is a really rigorous requirement for um, for this integral to exist. All right, but then we can ask the question, of course, like you know, what if we we allow um, f to be unbounded? Um, Uh, unbounded at x equals a. So what we're going to say then, of course, is that f is continuous on a all the way to b, right? But we're going to not include a itself, okay? So we're getting most of what we need without the a, that a there, all right? Okay. So what we're going to do then is say, okay, well, we're going to ask the question, what if I take lim the limit of t going to a from the positive side of the integral um, um, t to b of f of x dx? We want to ask if this if this limit exists, uh, then we can say, we can say the integral of f of x dx from a to b exists as well defined. So this is, allows us to expand out what we're trying to do with integrals a little bit, okay? So let me just give you an example. We'll just go to the next page. We'll talk about a classic example of uh, the, um, the integral of 1 over square root of x dx, and we're going to go from 0 all the way to 1, okay? So this function clearly has a, you know, a divide by 0 at at x equals zero. So what we're going to do, of course, if we look at the graph, it's going to be one of those functions that has that inverse kind of behavior, like this, okay? Uh, and it has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. Um, we cannot not, when we're setting up this integral, right, if I'm actually thinking about uh, setting up an integral, what I have to do is actually set up an integral that goes from t all the way to 1 of 1 over root x dx, where we're going to say t is greater than 1, or sorry, greater than 0, right? In this case, then what we can say there is t is right here, maybe, but it can be really, really close, right? But then, of course, we know we, we're dealing with a, a finite area under the curve, and of course, uh, the Riemann sum is well-defined. Okay. 
All right, so the question then is, I'm going to take now successive integrals, where I'm just going to march that t closer and closer and closer to zero. We'll just bring it closer and closer and closer. So what we'll do is we'll now take this integral, let's actually compute it. We, what we really have here is t to 1 integral of x to the negative 1 half dx. That's another way to write that same function. And of course, we're just going to take its antiderivative, which exists on this interval. We're going to have x to the negative 1 half plus 1 all over negative 1 half plus 1. Um, oh, and then we're going to evaluate it at t to 1. Um, okay, so now, of course, we've got x is equal to the positive 1 half. And that's, of course, going to be 1 over positive 1 half. Another way to write that, of course, is going to be 2x to the square root of x. Okay. So we're going to evaluate that, and it becomes... Um, 2 minus 2 root t. So the next thing we can do, of course, is ask, what if t goes to 0 from the positive side? And we can clearly see that just goes to 0. The limit does simply exist. And we get 2. All right, so... What we're saying here is the area under the entire curve, and I'm going to look at that graph again, actually is finite. Even with a vertical asymptote. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so what we're going to do now is let's try another integral. All right, so recall 1 over x squared from 1 to infinity dx. Well, we can rewrite that then as we did this one last time in the, in the previous video. We're talking about infinite domains. And this had the nice property that it also had finite area. It became x to the negative 2 plus 1 over uh, negative 2 plus 1, evaluated at 1 to t. And we're going to get um, uh, um, well, let's just keep doing the math. And then we have a negative x to the negative 1. We're going to evaluate that at 1 and t. We're going to get 1 minus 1 over t. All right. This, of course, went to 0, and we yielded 1 from it. So also by night. All right. So now it, it would it'd be nice to ask the question, Let's follow up on this and now ask, let's try to take the integral to 0 up to 1 of 1 over x squared dx. Again, the graph has that vertical asymptote. We may want to ask a question then about whether or not if I go from 1 up to t, and then I take that t closer and closer to zero uh, if the area is going to be finite. Well, we can, of course, start with an integral that's defined, that we know is defined, because the, the function is continuous and on the, on the full, full interval. And, of course, that's going to give me an x, a negative 1 over x. And then we're going to evaluate t up to 1. And we're going to get um, 1 over t minus 1. Okay, so uh, now we can ask, 
what happens when I take t to 0 from the positive side of 1 over t minus 1. And clearly, this is going to go infinite. So we can say it does not exist. All right, so in this particular case, then, in a, in a curve that looks very similar, we have infinite area. All right, and so that's a curious phenomena that some functions seem to have uh, finite areas under their curves and some do not, and it depends on, on, a, on the specifics of the function. Um, all right, so now I want to uh, do yet another example. Let's do another example. Let's look at the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of x dx. All right, so this integral is fairly curious, but let's look at the graph again of the function. We know the, the, the graph is actually negative over this point, and we have a, a curve that looks like that. All right. So if I were to flip this over, of course, it would be e, it's basically e to the x just flipped over. Uh, and so what we're looking at then is we want to know what is the area in this curve. So we know it's going to be a negative area, but we want to ask, is it finite? All right, well, there's nothing to do but except for to try it. So what, of course, we're going to do is... Um, is we're going to move and think about the integral t to 1, natural log of x dx. And again, here we're going to take t is going to be slightly greater than 0. And then we're going to, and now we have a well-defined integral. We have a, a function that has an antiderivative over that whole interval. So we can actually find that antiderivative. We're going to use integration by parts. We're going to get that x, uh, natural log of x, um, uh, from t to 1 minus the integral of x over 1 over x from t to 1. And then we're going to um, have a natural log of 1 minus t natural log of t uh, minus uh, x evaluated at t to 1, like that. So natural log of 1, of course, that's 0. And we get um, negative t natural log of t uh, uh, plus t minus 1. So this is our expression. Now we want to do, of course, is take the limit as t goes to 0 from the positive side of negative t natural log of t plus t uh, minus 1. First off, I don't really even need to, to, to look at this. Um, look at this business, because actually I, I know that this has a finite limit. The t, of course, is going to go to 0, and that, of course, is going to stay negative 1. All right, so um, it's worth just examine just the limit as t goes to uh, 0 from the positive side of t natural log of t. So we need to calculate this one, and we should have it. Okay. Um, this, of course, is an indeterminate form. This is a 0 times infinity indeterminate form. What I'm going to do, of course, is take that. I have to manipulate it. Turn it into a natural log of t over 1 over t. And now, of course, we have a infinity over infinity. So we can use our L'Hopital's rule. And we have a 1 over t all over 1 over 1 minus or 1 over negative 1 over t squared. There, that's what I'm trying to say. And that's going to become a a negative t, uh, 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 it'll just be a t to the first power. Of course, and that has a limit of zero. Okay, cool. 
So now what that means then, if I'm looking up here, oops. That right there is going to go to zero. So it's also finite. So putting it all together, of course, our limit is going to be negative one. So the area under the curve, when I fill it all in, actually is negative one. All right, very cool. Um, that one has a finite limit. All right, so I hope this has kind of helped you to see some of the uh, different ways you can take finite or uh, limits of, of functions uh, um, uh, uh, where the, there's a vertical asymptote involved and you need to define your integral where it exists and then just slowly work its domain closer and closer to the asymptote and see if, the, if that limit exists. That's the basic idea. <clears throat> um, all right. I hope this worked out well for you. I'm going to stop it here and I'll do some more examples in another video.